Hey guys, all right, I am back in the wine cellar and I wanted to talk about malolactic fermentation today, uh, which last week we inoculated our, uh, our wine tank with uh, malolactic culture. And like we had discussed, uh, malolactic culture is a, a bacteria that converts the malic acid in your wine to lactic acid. Uh, malic acid is a little harsh. It's kind of tearing on the tongue, a little, a little tough. Lactic acid is uh, the acid actually that's found in milk and uh, a little bit friendlier uh, on the palate. So one of the things that I always tell people, it's extremely important on malic uh, fermentation, malolactic fermentation, to follow the instructions uh, on the packet. Um, a lot of uh, different types of malolactic culture have different uh, requirements. Some, like I said, need nutrients, others do not. Uh, some you can directly inoculate, uh, some are better at lower temperatures, some are better at higher temperatures. So just like yeast, you really have to kind of pick and choose your battles. Um, a lot of times I get questions from younger winemakers. Um, how do I know it's working? When is it done? You know, all that kind of good stuff. So let's go over the basics. Uh, this malolactic culture we inoculated last week. Uh, the temperature was set at 70 degrees and then my buddy's dad came in here and turned the heat off. So we had to turn it back on and leave him a little note not to touch the heat. And uh, so we set it to 70 degrees. <clears throat> and I always keep a flashlight in the cellar, as you can see here, uh, for a couple reasons. Um, but especially when I'm going through uh, mallow culture. So here's one way you can kind of see it from here. Uh, Mallow lactic culture has what I call micro bubbles. Now on my demijohn, it looks like like a crazy fermentation. Uh, I've been here over an hour, and the airlock has not even moved. So uh, it looks like uh, just a, a crazy fermentation. But these are really really small bubbles, and I want to show you something. So this is going through a full blown mallow fermentation right now and again it looks pretty heavy you can see some of the bigger bubbles are eventually kind of working their way up this is going through um, secondary fermentation and I want to show you guys here it is I want to show you guys if you can see it let's see the difference between these bubbles look at the size of those things I mean these are very clear distinct large bubbles you could really see the the size of these things well it's kind of hard to tell but you could get the the gist of it there we go these are big bubbles when you look at the mallow bubbles they're really pretty darn small compared comparatively here's another one and this is a little bit of a better example you could see here there we go, right, uh, boy, there we go, perfect. See how slow that's going? See how tiny those bubbles are? These are really, really small bubbles. This is how you know, oh, there goes a big one. This is how you know your malolactic culture is working. You're gonna see these tiny, tiny, tiny little bubbles. And if you take the flashlight off, you don't see them. They're just not, uh, visible. You really got to bring the flashlight out, put the flashlight on the bottle, on the carboy, and you'll see if it's working or not. Now again, this was inoculated a week ago, and you could see this airlock has actually had a bit of movement. It still hasn't uh, burst the bubble yet. Uh, these over here actually kind of probably overfilled them a bit, and then when I turned the heat on, uh, and got the room uh, back up to 70, you know, these are, these are probably, uh, it's a little hot and they kind of blew a little bit, but for the most part, I've been here now for, like I said, a little while and I haven't heard a single airlock, uh, pop yet. So these you can see are going through 
secondary fermentation. You can see the size of the bubbles. You can see the verosity of them. So this is a yeast fermentation, not a uh, malolactic fermentation. Here's another example. These are yeast fermentation bubbles. These are not malolactic fermentation bubbles. And it's just clear by the size. So why do we put our wine through mallow fermentation? It's purely for two reasons. Number one is mouthfeel. The wine tastes better. Like I said, always keep your flashlight handy. The wine tastes better, number one. It's, uh, it's easier on the palate. And number two, stability. If you don't put your wine through a malolactic fermentation and you bottle it and the wine happens to be slightly infected with a mallow bacteria, which may or may not present itself, uh, you are, you're going to have a really gassy wine. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be like champagne in a bottle. And that's happened to us a couple times. We spent a ton of money on grapes, made a really nice wine, thought we had it all done. It tasted dry. Everything is good. And uh, lo and behold, six months later, we open up the bottle and it's champagne. So what do you do? You know, do you drink it? Do you toss it? So uh, it's not a good day in the house. Let's just leave it at that. Uh, here's another tip. Now this one, again, this is going through secondary fermentation, but no light. You could barely see the yeast accumulating on the walls, the side walls. Put the flashlight on it. You could see the yeast really is there. It's kind of the best view. You can see all that yeast that's now, because it's re-fermenting, it's going through a secondary fermentation. It's now, you can see that yeast all climbing up on the walls as it goes through secondary fermentation. So just another quick thing, what is secondary fermentation? Secondary fermentation is after you've racked the wine. Um, if it's 100% dry, then you will not get a secondary fermentation. These whites were 100% dry when we when we racked them. Not that one. That one's a bucket. This one was actually from grape. Uh, and so these are not going through a secondary fermentation, but all the rest of these are. Secondary fermentation, you really got to keep an eye on your temperature control. So, okay. Now, back to uh, malolactic culture. Uh, after you inoculate, how long does it ferment? It could take easily... Uh, anywhere from three weeks all the way through to six weeks, sometimes two months. And it's, again, dependent on the nutrients that are in the wine and the amount of malic acid in your wine. It's, it's not all wines are the same. Some grapes have more malic acid. Some grapes have less. And so you're going to have a, a different fermentation rate. There is some chromatography testing that you can do to give you a substantial or uh, confirm that the wine has gone through uh, mallow culture. Uh, I typically don't do that. I just keep an eye on it. And when the fermentation stops or slows down, I, uh, I give it another month after that. Then I rack my wine and sulfite my wine. You never want to sulfite your wine before you inoculate it with mallow culture. Now, here's a little tip. Uh, typically, typically when we make our red wines, what we like to do is at the point before we press, about a week before we press, usually our, our grapes will stay on the skins for four weeks. And right around that third week, 21 days, our alcohol fermentation is done and the cap sinks into uh, our primary fermenter. So we have all wine on top. That's a, a, and then of course we taste it and test it, make sure that the fermentation is complete. Then I inoculate it with mallow culture at that point. And I do it for two reasons at that point. Number one, there's still a ton of yeast nutrients and food for the mallow uh, uh, bacteria to start the fermentation process. Uh, it gets evenly distributed throughout the wine. We then go ahead and let that ferment for a couple days. You could actually see the cap come back up. You press the cap just like you would with a yeast fermentation. And then we... Uh, we press the wine and then what you'll get is you'll bring it into the house and you're going to get 
uh, after we've pressed it, you'll get something like this going on where you're going to see it continue to ferment. We know it's not a yeast fermentation. It's the malic fermentation. And as soon as that's done and complete, then we rack the wine and we sulfide it. This year, unfortunately, the garage got a little cold. We weren't able to. We didn't have time. Our schedules were all kind of conflicting. So at the end of the day, we ended up... Uh, inoculating it after the fact but if you can i suggest inoculating the malolactic culture right after your yeast fermentation has been completed and the wine is still on the skins now secondly um can you inoculate white wine with malolactic culture you absolutely can and the best wine to do it with is chardonnay so Chardonnay, when you inoculate it with a certain type of mallow culture, it's going to give you that nice, buttery tasting wine. I personally am not that big of a fan of buttery tasting Chardonnay or Sauvignon Blanc, but some people love it. So uh, I would never do it with a fruity wine like a, uh, a Riesling. Uh, I don't think it would taste good and it's not really recommended. Uh, but with a Chardonnay, you can absolutely inoculate it with malolactic culture. And uh, we do have some Chardonnay down here that we made. I'm contemplating whether or not to do it. Uh, I'm going to taste the Chardonnay here uh, probably in the next couple weeks. We just racked this off, um, I think, like a week ago. So I'll taste it, see what I think. If I like it, I'm not going to inoculate it. If I don't, I'm going to inoculate it. So... We'll see. Um, okay, guys, malolactic culture 101. That's pretty much it. Follow the directions on the package and absolutely make sure your temperatures are up, up to the uh, uh, recommended temperature uh, for that mallow culture and then give it time. It takes time for it to start fermenting. It doesn't, it's not like a yeast fermentation where the next day it's kicking off like crazy. This took over a week to get it fired up, but now it's fired up. I've probably got about a month and a half uh, before it's complete. So thank you guys. Have a good day.